Sunsets are really weird in the Pacific Northwest. When I first moved up here and experienced the first summer, I was blown away because the sun will stay in the sky until like 10 o'clock at night during the summer. And during the winter, we have sun from like 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and that's it. And it's really wild. And I am not talking about sunsets for a super random reason. But before I explain myself, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today is the second in Georgia's Sunrise Sunset Soap set. See, it wasn't random. And today's the Sunset Bar. So this was a really fun project for Georgia. She definitely wanted to tie colors from the two bars into, you know, each bar, but also do a soap that said sunrise and a soap that said sunset. And I think we're actually packaging them together in a gift set right now. So you get the sunrise, the sunset and a lip balm because that's awesome. But before I get too far into that, let's go look at the making of the product and see what a great job George made it. Okay. And today we have George May's sunset soap. And just so you know, George May actually uploaded this to the drive on like slow-mo and then I put it to regular mo and I don't know there might be weird choppy rendering things going on with this but you know we're gonna work through it it's gonna be awesome now what she is doing here again with her sunset soap we have four colors going on so we have the uh, the purpley blue and the dark blue and then you have the kind of coral color in the orange and she is working with a really cool scent blend for this actually. So it's a pomegranate, peony, plum blossoms, and pineapple. And really that's just because they all start with P and alliteration is awesome. Now with the, uh, the clay that she just put in, that was dispersed in water and uh, it's kaolin because you know, it's it, kaolin clay is awesome. And the oil blend that she's using for this is um, a 60-40 split of solid to liquid oils. And so for the solid oils, we have uh, shea butter and coconut oil and babassu. And for the liquid oils, we have hemp and olive and castor. And that is going to create a really big, nice lather that I really quite love. It's one of my more favorite blends, but you know, I have like 300 favorite oil blends. So now that she has hit emulsification, she is going to color the uh, orange and the red portions. And the reason for that is that she's doing sort of a, like a gradient pour ish, um, with some in the pot swirls and moving from, you know, orange into red and then red into, you know, purple and then purple into blue up the bar from bottom to top to create like a sunset. And I think that's super cool. And she's never done this pour before. And I've, you know, never seen this video before. So we're in it together for the first time ever. And that's exciting. And I look forward to, you know, seeing what George May's gonna do with all of this. And yeah, so there's the red going in and this rendering is really weird. I wonder if this is coming through in the final thing or if my Mac is just having problems loading because I have a lot going on. 
we will find out in you know the regular cut I suppose but everything is mixed up and she is ready to start her first layer for the pour itself okay and now we are on to the pour so she's gonna lay down some of her orange batter and while that's setting up she will focus on getting her next uh, color ready to go and that will be the purpley blue I believe I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's just blue blue. Yeah. I see some purple in there, didn't you? Let's go with some purple. And she's going to want the bottom layer to set up a little bit before she does the mix between the orange and the um, blue. And then, you know, we'll continue on with her, her pour. This is kind of like the, uh, what did we do? Like the orange mimosa from back in the spring line. And I love doing pours like this and you're just sort of adding the, the second color to you know the next one and you know all that jazz and it's very fun to make a soap like this because the color changes from you know one corner of the bar up to the very top and I think that's perfect for a sunset pour. I don't know exactly what I would call that because it's not exactly an ombre, it's not exactly a gradient but it's a cool transition of color from you know one to, to the next. And yeah, so she's going to be putting in the rest of the orange, well, most of the orange, and then the red on top of that, and doing, you know, the, the thing, which is cool because we like doing the things. And this pour is all being done at emulsification, and you see the batter, it's really very beautiful for this particular type of pour because you want everything to you want to give everything time so you can do the swirls in the pot for sure so soaping you know a thin trace or emulsification is really important but you're always going to be running into the problem of the soap batter inside setting up too quickly and so you have to be cognizant of that or setting up too slow rather so you have to be cognizant of that while you know making a pour like this and you've got to really pay attention to your soap in the buckets as opposed to the soap in the mold itself but also you can do you know what she did and you have a, a wall pour that's going on which is good and uh, then just kind of spooning things in as you need to if you're not trying to break the plane but again if the, the plane gets broken in this particular pour it doesn't really matter right because you that will just add to the overall effect I think of you know all of the sunsetty awesome because certainly when you see a sunset it's not all you know like perfect layered lines so I mean I think it all works out pretty well now that is a gorgeous blue oh my gosh look how pretty that is uh, yeah so definitely the last one was purple and that is a blue that is lovely I do not know what blue she used for this I should have actually kept the bit in the video in where she showed you but I didn't because when I first uploaded this it I, I, I the video itself was an hour and a half long and I went oh my god we're gonna have to cut so much out but then when I took it to normal speed because she had uploaded it in slow-mo um, it like it was condensed down to like 15 minutes so I didn't need to cut as much out and you know I guess live and live and learn but it's a beautiful blue and I look forward to seeing what it does once it's been gelled and sea popped because right there after you put it into the soap and you know mix it up and the soap with the kaolin clay and everything it's definitely getting more kind of muddy like more of a blue jean blue and I loved the really bright blue that it was you know just in its, its mica form so I'm hoping a good sea pop will make that blue come back now she is working on an angled with an angled mold for what purpose, I really don't know, um, especially since she takes it off right away. So I'm not sure what she was going for with that and what she was trying to do with the angles. I'm sure she can comment on that, you know, down below and we can find out. Because usually, I mean, when I do an angled pour, when I put something underneath the mold, I do it and let it sit for a while so that angle will, you know, sort of stay. And then you can like flip the angles too if you're doing a uh, 
like a zebra stripe pour or a oh gosh what was the one that I tried with the camelcado the oh the tall and skinny shimmy stuff like that if you continue to swap the angles out like that then you know you can that's cool but just I don't know putting it on an angle for a minute and then taking it off I don't know what the uh, the thought process was behind that and so I would love to hear what she was thinking about and I'm sure she will she will tell us in the comments below which is great because yeah she actually watches the videos which is super cool because you know you made the soap so you should want to do the things and this is going to be her last layer here and you see how the batter has still stayed really really nicely fluid I, I love everything about this batter even with a 60 40 blend here she still achieved a really decent batter that is still mixable in the pot itself but then also you know it's reasonably pourable into the mold that's great it's so beautiful and yeah this uh this soap in and of itself everything looks like it it worked really well and i don't see a darn thing wrong with this that would make me you know think that there's any sort of problem whatsoever this was just a beautiful pour all around she soaked at the right temp she controlled her trace in her buckets while paying attention to how things were setting up within her mold i mean i'm sure she had a very enjoyable experience with this because just watching this tells me that i would have had an enjoyable experience just soaping with this everything seemed really really well done and the cool thing about this particular uh, soap batter here it, it was fluid enough to pour which is great but also it's firming up reasonably well in the mold so it's going to give her the ability to do a decorative top and Georgia May loves pretty tops she loves pretty tops more than any soap I've ever met actually she's super into it so I know that she's going to do you know a pretty top of course the reason I know that is because yesterday for the sunrise soap she also did a pretty top and it was amazing so yeah let's uh, see if she does the same thing for this one I'm going to imagine that she does because it is uh, like the sister bar to the sunrise soap so let's you know check out her top decorating skills and see if she you know does the thing and of course she's gonna do the thing look at her she's gonna do the little spirally cutesy things on the top which again this is a perfect batter to do that now there are also sort of impression things that you can do to achieve the same effect on top of soap so you can use like an impression silicone mat or you can sort of do a pull up technique with like a piece of wire that's been you know twisted around but this is just as easy if not easier in my opinion is to just you know create it with your skewer because you always have your skewer out anyway so that works out now this guy is beautiful and is ready to be put into the oven to seep up overnight and then we will uh, cut it tomorrow and again hopefully those blues really brighten up hopefully that blue really brightens up so we can see more of the really bright vibrant blue that we were looking at earlier when we were you know checking out the um, the, the pouring of the mica into the soap batter itself and so I really hope that, that blue you know really shines through but you know let's let's go see okay and it's on to the cut now look at that top look how beautiful it is also do you see the crack on the top so it did get overheated through gel so you got the little crack going on in the middle there because heat needed to escape but just rewind real quick and look at that dusty blue, that denim blue versus the blue that, you know, exists in the final product. That, my friends, is C-pop. That is why I love C-popping things because it forces everything through gel and it makes the colors pop so nicely. And this bar is beautiful. I love this. This is so nice. There's a nice subtle you know shift with the purples and the blues but you know really good contrast with the purple and the orange then you have the you know the lighter orange and the kind of reddish oh it's beautiful everything about that is just lovely she did such a good job on this 
And this scent blend, again, it has the, the pomegranate and the peony and the plum blossoms and the pineapple. It is delightful. This smells warm and like sultry. It's so good and it just screams it screams sunset. I, I mean, I want to use, you know, terms like it's really hot, but it's not, it doesn't smell spicy. It's not hot. It just, it smells like the heat of the sun, like, you know, after the end of the day and all of the grass has been warmed and all of the, it's just, it's all of the things that have been warmed by the sun through the day exist in the scent. It's absolutely delightful. This is a really well done bar. So and this is a Day 109, the sunset soap to accompany the sunrise soap. And we thought they were so cute that we went ahead and put them into a gift set as well. So you can get the sunrise, the sunset, and a lip balm on a cute little package there. Everything about this soap was such a new experience for Georgia May. She'd never done a soap quite like this before. She had never worked with these scent blends before. She de definitely never worked with these color combinations either. So it was definitely a fun experience for her. And it was very fun for me to, you know, watch and comment you know, on. And so that's awesome. I personally love both of these bars, the sunrise from yesterday, as well as the sunset from today. They are beautiful. And I'm very excited to have them in the line. The scent combinations that she did with these, very complex and very, very cool. It's always nice when you can move away from this smells like watermelon, or this smells like mango to this smells like all of the awesome things. And so I'm really glad that she did that with these ones today for sure. Now, if you are interested in the sunrise or the sunset bar or the gift set of them together, you can totally find them on the website. They're at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in following me on social media, do the things, I'm there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And if you are interested in winning $500 worth of soapy awesomeness, subscribe to the channel because once we get 500 subs, we will be picking one of those 500 subscribers and we will be giving them a big box of soapy love, which will be tons of products that we have made on the, on the channel up to this point. And again, thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I super appreciate it. That does it for me today. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.